Who here has not heard about the NAR settlement from Friday? Kind of a bombshell. Okay, there's one hand up there. Colby, we'd like to have you come up be an object lesson. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> no, it's awesome. No, I'm just teasing. Let's talk about it really quick. There's some changes that are coming. So first and foremost, first and foremost, these changes do not take place until July. These do not take place until July. May I make a recommendation? How about right now? Start doing these things now. We'll have documents coming soon. Um, UAR is, is creating documents, documents, um, forms committee, excuse me, is creating those forms to help us. Um, so let me just go through really quickly. Yesterday, did anybody not get the email from KW? There was a KW email that went out to all of our associates. So I'm just going to briefly go through these if because I know that there's one or two of you that might not have read that email because oh, another email from KW. Okay. In a nutshell, NAR settled um, and the same lawsuit that um, was where they were found I'm going to use the word guilty, but I don't want to use that's not the right word. They were found liable for committing antitrust um, in insisting that there's a promise to pay on the MLS. And so with that, there, um, there was an award of one point eight billion dollars um, for the for the plaintiffs. Um, that's trebled because it's an antitrust case and it's a federal case. Therefore, it ended up being somewhere around a five point four billion dollar deal. Problem with that is NAR, KW, and Home Services of America, who were the defendants in that case, they don't have that money. Everybody files bankruptcy, so the attorneys don't want that to happen either. Um, since that time, KW has settled. Um, these settlements have yet to be approved by the court. Um, it's likely they will be because the plaintiffs have accepted them and the terms, and so we're kind of moving that direction. Anyway, NAR settled. These are the terms of their settlement similar to what um, KW's rules are, or KW's settlement was, um, NAR has a few more specific um, issues that went on there. Number one, this is this should be really similar. Buyer representation agreements are required. How many of you are writing offers without getting a buyer broker agreement? Please don't raise your hand, because if you do, you're fired. Um, you So with the state of Utah, just to let you know, in general, we're already doing most of these things. We're already doing it. So that's a good thing. So we're in, we have a good practice going on. But you have to have a buyer broker agreement in that you must be very clear about how you get paid and how much you're going to get paid. Something that's um, tied to it that I thought was really interesting. If you put on your buyer broker agreement, this is in July, that I take zero, that buyers, you don't have to pay me anything, and you then negotiate with a seller to pay our brokerage, you cannot be paid more than what is on your buyer broker agreement. And so they're going to, I imagine that one of the practices will be you get to send a copy of your BBA to the listing agent and make sure that we're paying you the correct amount. Quit putting zeros on there anyway. You do not work for free unless you do. And, and all that. So stop it. Okay. Um, yeah. Hang on. Currently, if your BBA says per MLS, he approves that, I'm going to tell him to stop it right now. Yeah, that has been a practice in the past saying do it per the multiple listing service and it doesn't work. Yes. Thank you, Jamie. That's the great idea. So if you didn't hear it, and for those on Zoom, make it a habit. When you send, if as a buyer agent, when you're sending your docs in to title, please send a copy of your buyer broker agreement. Um, now, we had a great question come up on our regional call yesterday when we were discussing this. And the question was, well, what if the seller's offering an additional 1% instead of 3% that Dean asks for? that the seller says, I'm willing to pay four. Can we get paid that four? Yes. How do you do that? Amber? Yeah, doing a den with your buyer broker saying that we'll take all the money the seller's willing to pay in, a, you know, in addition to the three. 
so we can amend that by addendum. So please make sure that you send all of your docs in with with your contract. So what, you'll have a, a full rep that you send in generally to your title company. Please make it a habit now to start sending your buyer broker agreement in. Do not put as per MLS because that's one of the rules that's changing. So this, this is, and I'll jump on it here, offers of cooperative compensation cannot be made on the multiple listing service. So there will, here's where it's fun. Last week I said, stop saying BAC and call it BBC. Today we still have BBC, the Buyer Brokerage Commission. So we have that, that's gonna stop come July. That will not be on the MLS anymore. They will, it will, won't be there at all. There will be no offers of compensation on the MLS. It is a secret. Yeah, it, 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 well, it is a secret, but it really won't be a secret. What will happen, it, what you're gonna start seeing is agents are, I'm gonna be calling a listing agent. I'm gonna text him or her a text. What is, the, what is your seller or what is your brokerage going to be offering as agent, as, as a buyer brokerage commission? You know, the, this, this agreement, and this is where I'm, I'm scratching my head. I don't like it as much. Now they are asking the seller to pay it. Now, right now in today's world, let's, let's just talk about today, March 19. The buyer brokerage commission is offered on the MLS. Let's pretend it's 1%. Dean's buyer broker agreement says 3%. How much does my buyer have to bring to the table? An additional two, right? To, to fill, fulfill their obligation. So we have a form. It's the payment addendum, the brokerage payment addendum, where we ask the seller to pay over and above what's on the MLS. That doc will just change and it will say, seller, we're asking you to pay on behalf of the buyer pay the buyer's brokerage fees. That's all it is. It's a fairly simple form. It's, we already have one similar to it to increase what's being paid on the MLS. If there was a $500 BAC on that $800,000 house, how many of you are jumping out and saying, I want that? You know, no, that, that may or may not work for your business model. So we asked the seller to pay because we're paying market price for the house. We're asking the seller to pay a market commission. Does that make sense? That's all. So it's the same kind of a thing. Anyway, just because offers cannot be made across the MLS, they can be made anywhere else. If I were a listing agent, I'm probably going to add now to my repertoire on my website, I have my listings. I'm going to be putting down how much of a buyer brokerage commission or cooperating commission is going to be available. I can put that on any place except the MLS. Right now, you'll see, yeah, Peter. Um, no, and the, yeah, it, it, it has to be, it cannot be on the MLS. It has to be somewhere else. And so we just want to keep that away. They can't, look, go ahead. You can advertise on your own website, your own listings. You can do that. You just can't, IDX feeds won't have that. But a broke, they said brokers, agents can offer their own listings. They could do a Facebook post saying, while this home is available, the seller is willing to pay X for a brokerage fee. Nope, because that's tied to the MLS. No, it wouldn't be in aligned showings. It wouldn't be, it, it just, it can't be tied to the MLS and aligned showings is owned by the multiple listing service. That's one of the things that the MLS cannot create a third party website that's owned and run by the MLS that shows all of the um, buyer brokerage commissions available. So that's not available. That's not something they can do. Yes. Yes, it is not a violation if it's on my website, if it's on another website, it just cannot be on the MLS. So buyer's brokerage compensation just can't be offered on the MLS. It can be offered on any other site. Yeah. Yes, so we'll get to that in a second on how do we ask for commissions and all of that. Rob, you had a question.
Yeah, so yes, it will not be offered. There's no compensation offered on the multiple listing service. Part of the agreement that NAR came up with with the, the plaintiffs in this case was that the MLSs will not have a required offer of compensation of any sort to be paid. So let's talk about it. If we're, what is going to happen is on the offers, when you write your offer, you're going to say, hey, we want the seller to pay X amount in commission to the buyer's brokerage. Or you can not address that and not get paid. So I don't recommend that, honestly, just because we're looking for the win-win. You know, it needs to be a win for the seller. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have full trainings on how to do it right now. Use the broker right now. Everything is business as usual until July. Well, I promise you, we will have very specific trainings. We're gonna have something next week after our team meeting. Um, or next week Wednesday, we actually have a class. We're gonna talk all about what are you know what's our value proposition and how do we move forward. I'm gonna move to the next slide just for fun. Um, so on the desk and on the table in front of you, we do have copies of these 13 reasons why the seller would want the buyer to be represented by a, by a licensed agent, by a realtor. This is just some of the value that you'll get from the, the, the value squared class that we're gonna be attending next week. So in lieu of team meeting, come and we're gonna be watching that. It'll be awesome. It's only four hours, but I heard it's really about, is it an hour and a half, two hours? A little over two hours but come to team meeting just for that. You'll get this kind of information. You're gonna be able to talk about, as a listing agent, why do I want to have a buyer's agent? Go ahead, Hunter. Okay, so let me, let me go through the rest of these just really quick so we can get through the, these final steps here. Offers of cooperative compensation may be made off of the MLS. We talked about that. Any place except the MLS, you can have cooperative compensation. And then, Again, our, our buyer broker agreements, our exclusive right to sell agreements are very specific. Where does the money go? How are we, what is the seller going to be paying a listing broker? What is the seller going to be contributing to help a listing broker pay for a buyer's brokerage? And so you can do all of that. That's still business as usual. We're, we'll be able to work through this. It's not gonna be the exact same. Because if you don't ask for, I'm going to say, you don't ask for your supper, you don't get fed, right? So make sure to do it. Amber, just because you're on the forms committee, have you guys already started having conversations? When, when's your meeting scheduled? So it's still still up in the air. We know it's coming because Peter Christensen said so. So anyway, I'm excited about it. But just know that it's coming, that it, you're not going to go into this blind, but we are going to do something. Now there's one other stipulation that came through that I thought was super important. Agents will not be able to show a home without a buyer broker agreement. I've been teaching it as a best practice. Many of you already do that. I was on the phone with an agent this morning and I said, yeah, just make sure that one of the big changes that came through, you may not show a home without a buyer broker agreement because you're responsible. Did you know that? You show, you show a home, let's say you're meeting somebody at a house they go through and they steal stuff from the house unbeknownst to you because they're good. You're responsible for it because you have a fiduciary duty. Even though you don't have a but wait a minute, you didn't do, you brought somebody in without finding out who they are. You brought somebody into my house without making sure they were pre-qualified. Shame on you. Best practice is you get a buyer broker before you show a house and that will be one of the new rules, if you will, that are going through according to this settlement. They they are under a buyer broker. So if what if somebody is showing a property on my behalf? Great. They already have a buyer broker in place with that buyer. And so you can be a showing assistant for someone who has a buyer broker agreement with it, with it, somebody. Yes, you do need to have something signed with the person you're showing unless you're acting as an assistant to someone who has a buyer broker agreement. Yes, if you're showing on behalf of someone else, that means that presupposes they have a buyer broker agreement in place. Okay, is that clear? Guys, how many, all right, 
this is this is you know tell the to tell the truth. How many of you have shown a house to somebody, and then they went ahead and bought the house and they didn't use you? Yeah, living that I've lived that dream. That's really exciting. Okay, or you, sh you know, I, and you've heard it said before, and, and and it's it's a it's a dumb colloquialism in the industry. I added to it. They say buyers are liars, and I say and sellers are worse. Um, guys, part of being a professional is that you get your paperwork in place. I know it's crazy. We're purveyors of paperwork. Do your paperwork so that you can get paid, and it protects you, and it protects your clients. Um, I, I think it best the succinct way of saying it um, was in a meeting yesterday with Cameron and Cameron just said, oh, that means we just have to be more professional. Guys, do the work. It's wonderful stuff. You were going to say something, Hunter. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. So next week, 11 to noon, that's where the most of the meat will be. We will actually have lunch be served between 12, 15, 12, 30 when they take their break. This is awesome. You'll be able to sit down with Gary, Jay, and Jason, and they're going to talk about your value proposition and some of the things. So those 13 steps that are in front of you, you'll actually get. And there's just a ton of information. So we really encourage you to, to come to that. Um, if you cannot make team meeting next week, they have two more presentations where they'll be there. Um, I think Gary is not going to make, is it the April 10th one? He's Gary's not going to be on that one, but these are live, absolutely worth your time. If you want to be able to do as a buyer agent, share your information saying, this is why you need to use a buyer's agent. This is why you should, you would want to pay me 3% to do that. Um, I suspect, you know, lenders, I imagine you guys have already been talking. I suspect that some things are going to have to change in the world of lending. Possible, Taylor? You know, that maybe buyers will be able to finance their brokerage fees. Because right now they're doing it by, if you will, they're paying the price, paying a retail price for the house, and they're asking the listing brokerage to cover that. Now through NAR's thing, they're asking the seller to cover that. And so it can be a concession. There's a caveat. I want to talk about that. In your listings, you may, in the public remarks, put concessions down, but none of those concessions can be tied to commissions. Does that make sense? I'm going to have a flooring allowance. I'm going to have um, a painting allowance or whatever it might be. We're going to throw some money in for yard work. Those are fine. That just can't say, hey, and we're going to offer X amount in you know, commissions for your buyer agent. So you cannot do that, but you can do any other concessions. Just cannot be tied to compensation. Are there any questions? I mean, there's a few things. You and I both are old, yes. Okay, I'm gonna hang up on this call. Um, the complaint was, it says the MLS shouldn't have a public facing website. I absolutely disagree, but that's, you, you're entitled to your opinion. If I, if you already said this, I came in late, but if you're a listing agent and someone calls to show your, to see your property, what do I do now? <laughs> Say yes, you may see the property or no. If, you know, if a buyer calls you to show the property, you would just say, um, who's your agent? Yeah. Great. Then you then I'd love to have you. I can show it to you, but you need to sign an unrepresented buyer document because you're not represented because I don't allow dual agency in this brokerage. Did everybody hear that? <laughs> but But yes. So yeah, so if you're a listing agent, to, to rephrase the question, if you're a listing agent and a buyer calls you directly from your sign or from ads on, on the internet, they say, great, who's your agent? Have your agent schedule it. And they say, oh, I don't have one. Great. Um, before you come in, I have to have you sign a document saying that you're an unrepresented buyer. Before they see it? Yes, before they see it. They would have to have a buyer broker in place. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the question is, or the point is, if we don't police ourselves, there will be a class action lawsuit down the road. And Peter's predicting 10 years. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so that's an interesting, I'm going to call that a best practice, Peter, that, and that would work in the new world come July, and you may even start doing it now. Great. Listing buyer agent, please go ahead and send me your copy of your buyer broker agreement. I'd be, I'd be happy to schedule that showing. And maybe that's a piece that we'll put, you know, and that's a recommendation I'll throw into showing um, for Align Showings. Colby. So Colby's decided to add Pode to the MLS. Super cute means 3%. That's only for Colby Kerr, K-E-R-R, Colby at redsign.com. <laughs> okay, we have lost control, but I think that, are there any other real questions? Okay, we're going to have additional. Go ahead. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Courtney, but introduce our guest speaker. But guys, be on your best behavior. I know it's crazy. Be professionals. Do the very best. And now turn the time over to our newest broker to be almost, almost Courtney. So I am so excited to introduce our guest speaker today. She and I met over 10 years ago. We were both teaching high school English at the time. And we immediately, you know, we liked each other because we both taught English, but then we found out more. We're both Virgos, born on the same day, September 15th, and we both have a love affair with Paris. So, so many things. Um, we both left teaching and I followed her, you know, just to see what the heck she was up to over the years. And I was so impressed with everything that she was up to. I watched her build several six and seven figure businesses. And I wanted some, I wanted in on the action. So I reconnected with her and now she is one of my coaches. She has a master's degree from NYU. I wrote some notes. <laughs> uh, in directing and I think her superpower, and I think she would probably say that, is helping businesses develop and build their branding and marketing strategies that help their businesses scale to what we all want, six and seven figure businesses. She teaches workshops all around the world. And um, I want to please welcome my friend and coach, Darcy Benincosa. Okay, sweet. Good. That thing down probably does not do that well. Okay, here we go. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Darcy Benincosa. I, as Courtney said, started off as a school teacher years ago, and then I had this crazy idea to become a wedding photographer in the state of Utah. Not very lucrative, like you looking around at all of you, there was a lot of competition and it felt like a very saturated market and everybody would come up and say, my budget is $1,500. I could not make a living at that. And so I learned in two years how to really develop a brand and a business that scaled me into the luxury Park City wedding photography. I started charging 10K for weddings and then I went and started doing big destination weddings in Paris and all over Europe and quickly became one of the top wedding photographers probably in the world for uh, quite a bit. From there, I started to develop online education and build brands and I scaled a seven figure online coaching and creative business by teaching people how to sell themselves, by teaching people how to create a brand. When you think of brands, most of you probably think of a logo or brand colors, or something like that, maybe your headshots. You all, just as a photographer for many years, probably need an updated headshot. If it looks like you were a high school English teacher, you need an updated headshot, okay? We don't want any yearbook photos. And I'll tell you what, whenever I see a real estate agent or anybody and they're like this, that's not what we want, okay? You need to update that and really decide who you are. So 
I started now working for bigger corporations like Toyota and um, brands that sell things, brands that are personal brands and brands that are more like big companies. And the thing that it always comes down to is your messaging and your values. How many of you know off the top of your head your top five brand values that you do everything for? How many of you know your brand values? Do you know one brand value? You know a brand value. What's one of yours? So we are super transparent. That's kind of our tagline. So we've got like a 17 standard that we try to accomplish every single day. Okay, so what's one of the values? So the experience matters is what you're delivering is the value like Okay, so people over profit. I love that. So Brene Brown, if any of you know her, she came up with an incredible values list. I put it in front of you right now. It's not working. I did turn it on. I'm really quiet. That is never anything anybody said to me before. Okay. Okay, so you have your brand values in front of you. You have a list of them, a lot of them. We are going to circle five. And the reason why this is so important is because this will give you clarity on your marketing and branding with everything that you do. I've been asking questions about you guys. And the biggest thing that I've heard is that you are very inconsistent with what to post, when to post, how to interact, how to network, that you have like hits and misses, but you don't have constant strategies that you put out online or in person every single week. And you might be relying too much on just who you know, which as real estate agents, that's a really important thing. But let's circle some of our brand values. When you see one that you know is yours, that you're like, oh yes, that is what I stand for, shout it out. Family, that's a perfect one for real estate agents. Trust, perfect. Caring, competence, I love it. Excellence. You want teamwork. You want five. Integrity. Okay, so let's take integrity versus family. When you guys know your top five, and if you're selling homes, it doesn't have to be family, but you do need to know the things that are important to you. Because let me tell you what's happening in business. It's something you already know, but I'm going to reiterate it. People are not buying what you sell anymore. They are basically buying who you are. In the world that we are in, and I am on Instagram every single day, people want to know that you are like them. Because in the world of cancel culture, they want to make sure they're not buying from somebody that might get canceled. So they really want to make sure in my business, we call it Karen proofing your business. <laughs> How do we make sure your business is Karen proof? Because the, it's the wild west out there right now. People are getting shot down. Businesses are getting destroyed by one thing out of alignment. So branding and who you are and your values is even more important. So we take family versus integrity. If you were selling a home and family is the key value, you're going to be able to talk to that person, that ideal client. They're going to be attracted to you because of the way you talk about how the family would be in there, how the school districts are, the neighborhoods. You could put together, you know, here's where all the local, here's the horse riding community, and here's this. All within this, you could go the extra mile so they really understand the value their family would get from buying that home. Whereas integrity, I have bought and sold many homes on my own. I like to dabble in it. My other job was a real estate agent. I, I've always wanted to be one, but um, I integrity is one of my highest values. So when I was getting ready to sell one of my homes, I put money in to get um, the driveway repaved. I re like the pipe. I had a really old home, 1906. The pipe out to the um, street, the sewer was like getting branches. I replaced that because I couldn't in integrity sell a faulty home because I don't want to buy a faulty home. I sold that home very quickly, pretty much on my own 
because I was able to say, hey, this is what I did. This is what I did. This is how much this home is in integrity. And you, when you move into this home, you don't have to worry that something's going to break or fall apart because I've updated everything ready for you, right? So that's an integrity versus a family-based thing. But it's about your values. And when you know your values and you can speak them out to people, you will, if you know the law of resonance, where like attracts like, you will attract those people who have the same values. If you're just trying to sell another home, like all of you in here, it's like me just trying to sell wedding photos. I was going to get beat out by everybody who was cheaper than me if, if we're all seen as the same. But when I really came into my value, which my value was I'm not a photographer, I'm an artist, and I'm going to give you art in your home. And um, not only that, I have a really good reputation. I've been published on Martha Stewart, right? I got all the social proof. I got published in Harper's Bazaar. I worked with um, Martha Stewart's weddings. I worked with all the top wedding publications, which gave my clients the trust. They could trust me because somebody not trustworthy is not going to have these kind of accolades, right? So everybody got your brand values? Anybody confused about your brand values? Anybody surprised by a value that was yours? No, you all know yourselves really well. Do, were there some on there that you're like, I wish that was mine, but I just don't resonate with it very well. Okay. You were not quiet for him, but okay. All right. It's okay. It's okay. I taught eighth graders. You guys can't break me. Okay. So this says rebrand. Um, rebrand or branding, it's the same thing. Before I kind of dive into some of these, some of these questions are going to really hit you. Some of them are going to be like, I only sell one thing, Darcy, so it'll be pretty easy to fill that out. What is your biggest branding or marketing struggle? Yes, thank you. My struggle is that I don't know how you let the public know the difference between, how do you say this? A crappy agent and us. Like, like it's hard to, it's hard to get that out there because they, I feel like they all think, okay, so homie says best service, best price. Well, it is crappy service. And I can say that in here because it's set online, but they don't know that. So my struggle is to, 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 to let, differentiate and to let people know like how much heart and soul and how much value and how much we have saved people, whether it's money or deals or the falling apart or helping them through that transaction or helping them understand it. So they have the knowledge. How do you do that in a short time? Because me just explaining that was really long. That wasn't long. That was good. And that could be a blog post. So <laughs> what I would suggest for all of you, the way that I built a seven figure business is people were not ready to buy from me immediately. Now I have $30,000 coaching packages and I have a 197 course. Usually they need to go on a journey with you. And as real estate agents, you might just be thinking I'm a one hit wonder. I sell the homes. That's all I do. But you have to do more than that. Now you have to become, so what are your brand values? Well, one of them is probably, you can, no, it's going to be okay. Just go with your heart first. Just, just don't overthink it. So if you, that's why you just got to do it with me hovering over you. Okay. So how many of you felt her passion when she was talking about that? I'm doing it right now. Yeah. You felt that, right? How many of you don't want your clients to have that happen to them. So something a little controversial you could do, uh, and the website is called Homie, and you're saying they're not good. That would be my opinion. <laughs> that is what people want these days. Why? Okay, then you could say five things to look for, five red flags for apps selling homes. Something like that. I don't know the apps very well. For like home, home selling apps. From Zillow to Homey to this, these are the five red flags I see as somebody who has your best interest at heart. Right? So if people, what you could do, I personally think you can give opinions and people would probably go on. You have to think about what they're going to Google, right? Homey versus Zillow. 
And if you had a blog call, post called Homie versus Zillow, and you say the pros and the cons objectively, I think that's actually really helpful. And then you say five flags to look for, five red flags, right? So your messaging comes from your values. It comes from your passion. And then you start to put it out. Marketing is where people can see it. Think about five people at a dinner table and she's talking about that versus 20,000 people on an email list who hear that. So you need to find ways to connect with your client through a brand that is more than just people wanting to sell a home Be or buy a home, either of those. So if one of your values is family or integrity, then you start to help people understand through a weekly newsletter or even one month newsletter, how to buy or sell their home, what to look for, how to create a home. How, you know, there's so many different things you could do. Have guest designers come in and stage a home, partner with Studio McGee and have them come in and give, you know, home renovation ideas. There's so many ways that you guys can build a list. I would challenge all of you to have an email list of a thousand people that you serve, whether they're ready to buy a home or not, that will help you get a brand that is well known and can grow into something bigger. So let's start talking with these brand, um, these strategic brands, okay? So let me get into number one. So you guys have this worksheet. So make sure you have your values. Your values will determine every single story that you share, whether it's a blog, whether it's in person, whether it's social media, whether it's Pinterest, I mean, I would take one piece, of, I try and write one killer piece of content a week. So let's say I did Homie versus Zillow, and then I put it in five different places. So one, it's a blog post with links on my blog, which I post to every single week to drive traffic because I'm an SEO ninja, and I love that. Then I would make a smart pin, which is an image with the title of it, and you pin it to Pinterest, which you can run really cheap ads to Pinterest right now. You know, especially if you're, talking, I think everybody when they're selling their homes should, not everybody, if it's your aesthetic, could talk a lot about home design, home pros and cons, what to look for, what not to look for, things like that. So when you are branding, so you all probably have one top selling product, a home, right? Now I would encourage you if you want to be a multimillionaire to uh, have a few more than this. You might think, Darcy, what could I possibly do other than sell homes? You could have a course that trains other real estate agents. Like, let's say you're a veteran. You've been doing this for 15 years. You teach a beginning course. You sell it for $4.97 to people who want to become real estate agents. Things like that. Easy. And there, I think it, it's, it's like an $80 billion industry. I mean, just eBooks alone sell on Amazon, it sells $70 million a day in eBooks. If you wrote, I would turn that homey versus Zillow or, you know, how to sell a home in the modern market or how to sell your home online. I would turn that into a $9 eBook and I would sell the crap out of it. So, but I'm an entrepreneur. And so everything I think about is how to make money in a good way. Um, okay. So you have your top selling products. Where are you selling those products the most? What I want you to do here is, are you selling them through word of mouth? That's probably a big one for you guys. Referrals, your network. Are you selling them through any type of social media? So are people following you online? If you're a real estate agent, it would be really killer for you to like hook up with a mortgage company and you guys have discussions on how you can help your people get the money to buy the home, right? You need to think of every single obstacle. I think by, I have, I have, I have not birthed a baby. So everybody who's birthed a baby is going to be like, Darcy, you're sick, crazy. Every time I bought a home, it's like birthing a child. I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's just, we're in labor and there's one more thing and I have to get him this and I have to get him this and I have to get him this. And it's really hard. And then the day you walk in with the keys, you're like, it was all worth it. It's all worth it. I have my home now. So you really need to break down every step of the complications and have ways that you are talking about this. Is anybody here on Instagram or gets any business from Instagram or TikTok? That's it. Three. Hmm. I counted you. One, two, three, four, 
five. Okay. Okay. Do you want to be on Instagram, but don't know what to do? Or do you just not want to do it? How do you feel like an imposter? Okay. So. Yes. Yeah, so the question was, do you want to be on social media or not? And if not, if you do, and you're not, what's holding you back? And so you said, she doesn't know what to post. She feels judged and a little imposter syndrome. Is that correct? You do yeah. brands by faces. Okay. So what are your values? Give me two or three. Uh, caring, friendship, integrity, and family. Okay. Caring, friendship, integrity, family. So if one of your values is caring, then you need to really be hearing what anybody is complaining about go spend time in chats where people are like I bought this home and it was this nightmare and this wasn't disclosed to me and this didn't happen and then you get on and you think of the top 10 nightmares okay people love a good nightmare story you know how if it bleeds it leads and you say I heard about it you know this person in Utah bought this house and then it fell down the mountain remember when the houses fell down the mountain the other like last year or a few years ago oh my gosh that we couldn't look away here is what I would, here's, here's why I would not buy, you know, here's where I would look for to make sure you don't do that. While nothing self, you know, fell proof, this is what I would look for when buying a house. So you just, you think, how can I care more about my clients? You take one of their questions, you get on face to camera, walking, walking is better because they want to follow you through the house and, and tell a nightmare story and how you would make sure they don't get the same nightmare happening to them. You could do that all year. Integrity. I like that you guys are integrity. That's that's really beautiful. Um, that could mean here's how he hey, I brought this expert. He's a foundation expert, or she's a foundation expert. Here's what you need to look for in the foundation of your house, in the house you're thinking of buying. Right? That's integrity. Like we want to make sure you're not being taken advantage of. We want to make sure here's here's signs to look for. I mean, I didn't I didn't know all the ways that um, mold could show up in a house until I started, you know, figuring out how to look for those things. So word of mouth should be all of yours. Um, I think either a website that has traffic, meaning you have an opinion, you have something to say about the world that you're in. And what you want to do is think of how you say it differently than anybody else. And one of the ways that you are going to say it differently is a lot about your values. It's a lot about what you stand for. Um, I'm going to name a probably a controversial person, not as controversial when I'm in Orem, but Jordan Peterson. Who knows him or has heard of him? Do you who likes him? Who hates him? Nobody hates him. Oh, okay, one. I used to hate him. I was like, who is this guy trying to tell women how to think, you know? And then I started listening to him. I'm like, you know what I like about him? He's not afraid to say really controversial things. Oh my gosh, I thought you were recording me. I was like, please don't Instagram me talking about Jordan Peterson. My audience is not on board with that. <laughs> um, why he has gotten so big is because he is willing to say things that most people are afraid to say. Now, I'm not making you go to Jordan Peterson levels. That's going to ostracize a lot of people. But here's the thing. If you're attracting everybody, then you're probably not being yourself enough. 
because, and then you'll get wishy-washy people. You actually want to repel people with your brand. So one of the things that I do when I am vetting people who are going to work with me, when they are filling out the thing, the first income bracket that they have to hit is over six figures. If they don't hit that, I say, this is not for you. You need to go to my beginning product. You should not even be, and they want to, because they're like, Darcy will help. I want to get here. I want to, you know, have her work. And it's like, you can't afford this. Don't even bother. I need to repel people from that. If they're not willing to stand up and show their face on a camera, I don't want to help them. If they're not willing to put in a consistent marketing plan, I can't help them, right? So you have to repel the people. So who is buying those products at the top channels? Um, where I really want to focus on, there are a couple things you really need to know. And then how much time do I have left? Like 10 minutes? Okay. What you really would need to know, the most important page on here is the uh, is this one. You need to understand how you are differentiating yourself from every single person in this room. Not to make a hunger game situation. I get that there's room for all of us to thrive, but I don't really believe that. I think that when you are strategic and you understand your values and you learn to show up and you get over all the stories of like, who will judge me, let them judge, okay? Anything that you're doubting, that's gonna hold you back and you are the problem. You know the Taylor Swift song, hi, I'm the problem, it's me? That's you guys, that's me too. I sing it a lot when I'm like, I got in my own way. I, I got in my head and I got in my own way. So let's talk about, now when I was doing weddings, I went straight for this, straight for this one. And I read a lot of books. There's an amazing book, if you guys are in the luxury home, called How to Sell to the Affluent. It's an incredible book. I wanted to book 20, 30, $50,000 photography packages. Now, in the state of Utah, that seems unheard of. Now, I had to leave Utah to get into that realm, but there are still places here in Park City and stuff that have that. It's usually destination. Um, most people don't even know that world exists. You know, I had a friend's mom say, can you shoot my son's wedding? And I didn't know how to tell her, like, I'm sorry, but my prices start at $15,000. Like, I knew she would judge me or think I was insane. But it doesn't matter because uh, I shoot really awesome weddings and I make a really good living at it. So this was mine, luxury. Where do you want to be? You know, where is a place where you, if you're educational, that goes with the caring. You're gonna start educating people on how to buy a home so that when it's time for them to buy a home, they want you. I go on Zillow every day just to look at homes I wanna buy because I know I will buy many in my lifetime and I like to buy one every three years. And so knowing my real estate agent and I've worked with a few and I know the ones I would go back to and I know the ones I would not go back to. And a lot of it had to do with how they interacted with me, how they handled my paperwork process, how they responded, all of those things that you guys know. But here is where we want to focus for the rest of this time. This one, we are always, we are never. And this one, what do you do differently? How do you do it differently? Why do you do it differently? Your emotional hook and your brand attitude, okay? So what do you do differently? This is a hard question for people. It's a hard question, but it's really back to who you are and what your personality is and how you can let that shine a little bit more. It's about presenting yourself as an expert and a leader. I personally do not want anybody leading me through a multi six figure or seven figure <laughs> purchase who does not feel a million percent confident, a million percent sure can answer every single one of my questions, right? So, and you have to think a lot about how you appear to the person. So I'll tell you a little story. I do a lot of remodeling in my homes. I like to buy old homes and I like to fix them up. And I was getting um, my cupboards. I was, I was getting bids for my cupboards. And I had almost decided on a guy and I, and we were looking at it and I was like, okay. And I said, okay, I think I want to do this. He's like, perfect. Where's your husband? So I can have him write me a check. And I was like, 
what? And I, I literally said to him, did we just time travel back to 1958? He's like, what? I go, sir, I called you. I booked the appointment. I brought you into my home. I'm telling you what I want. Why in the hell would you ask where a husband was? And he's like, oh, and he, I mean, he was an old guy and he felt bad, but I'm like, yeah, you just lost my whole, like you lost me. I'm not saying that any of you will do that, but I'm saying it's the tiniest little things of how you interact and where that client is on their personal journey. As a woman who's remodeled three homes on my own and had to deal with a lot of construction people, I have one guy who doesn't treat me like an idiot. And he is twice as much as the other guys who do treat me like idiots. I pay this guy. And he always upholds his word and he always makes sure he backs up what he does, which is very rare in the construction world, I have come to find out. But he charges much more. And I'm too afraid to leave him. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I know I can trust this guy. I get cheaper bids all the time. I don't, I, just, I don't even get the bids anymore. I'm just like, Milton, what is it going to cost me? Let's do it. Because I know I can trust him and he built that trust um, over a long period of time. So you need to understand what you do differently and why it's important for you to exist. Why it's important for you because too often in this online world, in this world where there's a lot of competition, we can psych ourselves out that there is a place for us. And you have to really believe that there is a place for you and it's not owed to you. You guys got to earn it. You got to wake up. What is, there's a phrase where he's like, you have to, you know, you have to pay rent and it's due every single day. <laughs> like you have to get up and you have to earn your spot online. Cause I'm telling you what, a 22 year old TikToker who's going to go on and be really controversial and talk about, she'll make it, she'll make $7 million. And you're like, wait, but I actually have the intelligence to do this, but you're, I'm not showing my face. That's the difference. Okay. Questions about how to you know, get to this place where you understand what you do differently, how to create your content from your values, how to really start to create a customer experience. We could cover so many things, but are there any questions? Not even you, Heather, you're not going to throw me a bone. <laughs> questions about what kind of content you can create. Yes. Yes. three words. Yeah. The aesthetic is spelled wrong. Yes. So we are always my three words for my weddings, glamorous, bold, and romantic. I am not a boho, um, princess, see Mormon wedding. Get what I mean? So, um, with my business, so we are always, what is the experience? Mine would be luxury. They get gifts. They have 27 touch points. I have 27 times my client is interacting with me from gifts, emails to support before I shoot their wedding. What are you doing? What are the touch points? With my private clients, they get weekly emails with custom curriculum and I create their to-do lists. Do you know how much they love that? Because I'm working with really busy people who are like, just tell me what to do next. I'm like, I can tell you exactly what to do next that will move the needle forward, that will build your audience and that will make you a shit ton of money. They're like, perfect. Let me pay you $30,000 because I will make them so much more than that. So it's a good investment. So the final result, you know, have a home that they love, right? What's the final result? The thing that um, you won't do is be pushy, right? Just how many of you have been pushed into like a car salesman who just wants to sell? That's not you guys, right? So who will you be? What are your brand words? Um, that kind of goes here. I, there's a whole list. There's, if any of you want to, I have one that's more for creative people. That's really good. But like, what are your brand words? What are the three words that represent you and your personality? you know, fire energy. My sister is an Aries and she's got flaming red hair and she's the definition of, I take up space, right? That's not me. 
I know how to take up space. I don't take up as much space as she does. She's awesome. But like, who are you and how do you show up? And when you walk into the room, what are, what would people assess about you? You know, I have a friend, her main job is to teach TED talk speakers how to walk on the stage because within those first three seconds, people have made an assessment about you from what you're wearing to how you walk to how you present. It's that important, whether you will go viral or not, or whether people will trust you or not. So if you don't think your clothes matter or the way you speak matters or the way you walk into a room matters, you're wrong. So maybe you're the cool, like friend next door, casual person who probably sells casual homes, you know, mid-level homes, which is awesome. Maybe you're the I wear my Chanel bag and I have Valentino. I know a wedding photographer in Paris, my good friend. She shoots an entire wedding in Valentino stilettos. She's inhuman. I don't know, the French, whatever. I could not do it. But she just walks around there and she, and now she's become so much more than a wedding photographer. The weddings, there was a big wedding. It was $52 million and it was held at the Opera House in Paris. She shot that. I mean, it's insane what people spend on weddings these days. But um, now she has built a Parisian brand where she just teaches people how to work in Paris and live there and love there and all the things. And she's building extra equity from that. So does that make sense? So um, I always say like an easy one, like my photos are sensual, not sexy, right? Like there's that beautiful sensuality or something like you want to think, what are you? What are you not? Those are really important. Um, the best way to know where you want to go is to find the muses that like the people who are already doing what you do and who you love what they're saying and how they're saying it and start to use those as muses for your own brand. Remember the very last thing to come are your headshots, are your colors, are your logo. That is the icing on a very well-made cake that is based upon values, based upon your communication style and based upon your service and experience. They need to know you, like you and trust you. If you've never um, read the book, Influence by Robert Cialdini, must read for anybody running their own business. Okay, any? I think I'm good, right? Are we done? Okay, thanks everybody.